Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Iowa-class battleships fire two types of projectiles, an armor-piercing round and a high-capacity round. Many people on the internet think that the high-capacity rounds should be called high explosives. That seems to be what the Army calls rounds like that, and maybe even foreign navies. But the U.S. Navy calls their shells that explode on impact high-capacity rounds. In fact, this projectile right here, a Mark 13 high-capacity shell, is stamped on its uh, brass base ring Mark 13 HC, not HE for high explosive. We've talked about this before in another video, and one of the questions we commonly get is why it's called high capacity and not high explosive. I've never seen an explicit answer to that written down. It just seems to be it's called that because the Navy does that. However, looking at some of the material, it may have to do with what type of fuse is installed in the shell. I've got two sources here I want to read for you from. The first one is uh, Robert Summerall's Iowa Class Battleships. This is one of those Bibles that every Iowa Class enthusiast should have a copy of. Um, but on page 73, talking about armament, it talks about the standard 1900 pound Mark 13 HC projectile can be fused with either the Mark 29 point detonating fuse or the Mark 48 base detonating fuse. So, I hate how everything in the Navy is a Mark this or a Mark that. Um, it's a Mark 13 projectile and it has various types of nose or base fuses. Point detonating would be up here at the pointy end of the shell. Base detonating would be down there at the base of the shell. Cells are not creative when it comes to naming things. On to page 74, skipping a few lines. Another serviced round is the Mark 13 HE, high explosive, which is fused with an M564 mechanical time fuse, which has a 100 second capability. A mechanical time fuse means that you are setting the fuse to explode after a certain period of time. Standard Navy fuses for these shells only go up to 45 seconds, so uh, this M564 mechanical time fuse goes up to 100 seconds, so they start using that very briefly. The shell was a Vietnam War replacement for the Mark 13 projectile with a Mark 62 45 second time fuse, in parentheses, Navy. A few, if any, Mark uh, 564 fuse projectiles still exist, having been replaced by uh, various other types of projectiles developed in the 80s. So, it seems like in the 1960s, when New Jersey is the only battleship left in the world, they were having some issues with the Navy-issued fuses. Remember, the Navy-issued fuses have a, a two-number designator after them. So they take some Army fuses. The ship's uh, commanding officer at the time, Ed Snyder, was uh, a gunnery expert. And Captain Snyder had even done some work with some experimental gunnery uh, stuff prior to being assigned to New Jersey. So uh, it seems like he had some strings he could pull, and he was able to acquire some uh, Mark 564 fuses. Now these fuses, uh, if you look them up, are not Navy fuses. They are Army fuses. They normally go in 81 millimeter mortar shells. So it seems like he's having issues uh, with his shells. And I've heard from sailors that they were having problems that these shells would strike the mud and not explode. Uh, so that, that's a fuse issue. The fuse isn't setting off the bursting charge and making it explode. So he wanted to set a special uh, time delay on it that when the Viet Cong try to recover the projectile to take its bursting charge and use in their own homemade munitions, that the thing would blow up on them. So I've heard sailors who worked in the ship's machine shop talk about how they developed uh, special rounds using Army fuses in place of the regular Navy fuses. So I'm fairly certain that that is what Summerall is describing, and they take the Army fuse that's able uh, to be set for a longer time, because it's a mortar round, it hangs in the air, it's not going at a high velocity like the Navy shells, and that's what they're using uh, 
to make this special type of projectile that they exclusively use during Vietnam. So that's part of why I think the terminology issue is an Army versus Navy thing. It's still a Mark 13 shell. The only difference is you're putting an Army fuse in it, and now it's called a high explosive round, uh, versus when it's got a Navy fuse and it's a high capacity round. In fact, they all have high capacity stamped in the base. The second source we have for this is the 1977 Gunner's Mate 3 and 2 qualification manual. So this is just one of those uh, manuals that you would read uh, to learn the information you needed to test to that higher rating. In this, on page 35, it's talking about the different types of uh, shells like this, high explosive, high capacity, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the book calls them thin-walled projectiles designed to inflict damage by blast effect and by fragmentation, breaking up into small, high-speed fragments. These projectiles have relatively thin walls and a large cavity for a bursting charge. The types of thin-walled projectiles are, and I should state, uh, this is all types being used. Right now, it's not specifically 16-inch. So in 1977, when this manual is written, these are all the types that they have. High capacity for use against unarmored surface or land targets. They are usually fused to function upon striking the target. And go down a couple of paces. High explosive projectiles for use against unarmored surface or land targets. So, so far, it's the same definition. When fused with point detonating fuse or used in the anti-aircraft role when fused with mechanically timed fuses to achieve fuse action, mechanically timed fuses must be set on a time setting between 5 and 45 seconds and never on safe. Point detonating fuses must be set on. Note the lack of base detonating fuse backups. So again, uh, the only difference between the two definitions in this Navy manual seems to be the way that they're fused, and maybe even more importantly, the way the fuses are set. It's worth pointing out, remember this is the 1977 manual, in the 1946 manual and the 1955 manuals that preceded this, there is absolutely zero mention of high explosive whatsoever. It only lists a high capacity shell. So it's not until 1977 that the manual actually lists separate definitions for high explosive versus high capacity. And the definitions are practically the same until the high explosive goes into a, a long diatribe about the type of fuse that's being used. Uh, so it seems like Iowa class battleships used almost exclusively uh, high capacity rounds, except for some possibly homemade uh, modifications to the Mark 13 in 1968 or 1969 that used an Army mortar shell fuse instead of the traditional Navy fuse. Potentially, uh, this type of fuse setting takes effect. Remember, this ship is decommissioned, but her crew gets sent to other ships. Her captain gets promoted to admiral. Like These guys are still out there in the fleet spreading their experience on how they were using these shells. And potentially that means by this point that um, the use of modified fuses is being spread to the rest of the fleet. And that's why we start to see high explosive. So as far as I can tell, the naming conventions for these shells, uh, it seems to be a difference of Army versus Navy and whose equipment is going into this particular projectile. And that makes sense because the Army would call a 16-inch gun barrel a cannon and the Navy calls it a gun. The Army would call a bathroom a latrine. The Navy calls it a head. The Air Force calls it a powder room. Like the, the different branches just have different words for things. What is your favorite branch specific word for something? Let us know in the comment section down below. We might make a video about it in the near future. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link down below you can click on to donate to continue to support us. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.